I was in Ghana. We came to Ghana a week ago to commemorate the 400 years the first slave ship left. It was the second worst day of my life. The worst day of my life, my mama died. I never, never really fully got over that. But standing in them dungeons, where they took us from, where they stripped us of our heritage, of our land, of our lineage, that we were kings, chiefs, queens, landowners, they took us from here. When I stood in that castle, I couldn't even stand up. See, for us to come to Africa, you don't know. See, you live here. You, you've been home your whole life. You here. When we come here, it's like coming home to a place you've never been. That's what African Americans feel when we come here. I don't know who, but when I stood in that slave dungeon, One of, one of my ex-sisters is that she climbed on and I failed. I couldn't even stand up because one of my ancestors was in that room. Of man. See, you, then we went to the second castle. I didn't have that feeling. I was just angry at what they did to us. How dare you create such an evil scheme to strip people of who they are and take us to this land far away where we were hated even more. And then we go over here and we build a nation. We built America. There are families today in America still benefiting from the billions of dollars from the slave trade. They opened up canneries, tobacco fields, they opened up ketchup companies, they opened up dealerships with the money that their ancestors made off of slavery. And this country still benefits the great America, which I was born in, still benefits from the slave trade. This atrocity lasted 400 years. 400 years. Some of us African Americans are the first ones to ever set foot of where we from. You and I are the same. When I'm walking around Botswana, I ain't no stranger. Y'all mine, I'm yours. I'm black like you. I'm African. See, you don't understand. I'm 62 years old. I know you can't believe it. I'm so fly. I'm so fresh and clean. I'm so dope. I drip. You understand? I'm with it. I'm the fly 62 year old on the planet. Outcast wrote a song about me. Ain't nobody dope as me, I'm just so fresh and clean. That was about Steve Harvey. Huh? <laughs> I've been around long enough. I was born in 1957 when we was niggas. I lived until they started calling us colored. I lived until they called us Negroes. I lived until they called us uh, black. And we finally understood that we Africans. So now in, Af in America, you have to identify us as African Americans. I've been through the whole gamut. You can't tell me nothing about this here. You know how hard we fought 
to identify with you. So we got to start embracing one another. We need to come here and feel you. We need to come here and embellish you. We need to come here and teach you what we learn. Now, America's a land of opportunity, if you want it, but it has its problems for us. When we get pulled over by the police, we can get killed. Slavery over, apartheid over, the residue is still there. We go into a store with a hoodie on, we walk down the street with a hoodie on, Trayvon Martin, they kill us, they get off, they go home. The man selling cigarettes in New York, police chokes him to death, kills him, he go back to work. Philippe, up in Minnesota, stopped by the police on Facebook Live. Watch him shoot the black man. The girl said, why did you shoot him? He said, I don't know. He free. The police that beat Rodney King to death, to a pope, they free. Huh? That's why we say, hold up. Mm -mm. African American. And as successful as I've been over there, as wonderful as I've created life for my family, I want nothing more than to come home. Nothing means more to me than to come home. You've been on my vision board for seven years. Africa has been on my vision board.